Hi everyone and welcome back to another Signals and Systems video. The purpose of this video is to discuss unit impulse signals. Now in the discrete time domain, uh, the unit impulse signal is a very simple signal. It's simply 1 at n equals 0 and 0 at all other time points. So it's indicated by the symbol delta of n. And again, the definition is simple. It's 1 when n is equal to 0 and it's 0 everywhere else. In continuous time, we indicate the unit impulse by delta of t. Similar to the discrete time impulse, it's also 0 for t less than 0, and it's 0 for t greater than 0. But at exactly t equal to 0, it is discontinuous there. It's kind of a special function known in mathematics as a singularity function or a generalized function. There's a lot of deep math behind um, these types of uh, singularity or generalized functions. This video is just going to focus on the key features of the continuous time unit impulse that we need for signals and systems. So we can actually interpret the continuous time impulse in terms of a short rectangular pulse. So I've sketched a narrow rectangular pulse right here. It goes from 0 to big delta, and it has a height of 1 over delta. So that means that this area here is equal to, right, the area of a rectangle is equal to the width, which is delta, times the height, which is 1 over delta. So in this case, the area is equal to 1. Now, we're going to let delta go to 0. So this pulse is going to be getting narrower and narrower in time as delta goes to 0. Right? So eventually as delta goes to 0, it's going to only exist exactly at the point 0 in time. But what happens to the height of that pulse when, it go, when delta goes to 0? Well then the height is going to 1 over 0, which is infinite. And so we sketch our um, continuous time impulse as a line with an arrow at the top, reminding us that it only exists at 0, but it has an infinite height, right? So that arrow is reminding us that this is a, an infinitely narrow pulse with an amplitude, as it were, the height of it is, is infinite. But why do we have this 1 right here? This 1 right here is equal to the area associated with that impulse. Because as delta goes to 0, this area is always going to be 1, because the area is just delta times 1 over delta. So this is the area. So if we were to integrate this continuous time impulse, we would get an area uh, that's equal to 1. So now I've added in a, another impulse down here just to show you. If I sketch an impulse, and I put a next to it, right, this would be the impulse a delta of t, that means I now have an impulse with area a. So I've just scaled this unit impulse here, I scaled this unit impulse here, and now it's a delta of t, so now that's an impulse with an area equal to a. So one operation we're going to be, need to be able to visualize is the multiplication of a continuous time signal with an impulse. So for instance, if we have this signal p of t that I've sketched here, um, and we ask ourselves what happens if we multiply that by the unit impulse, right, delta of t. So I've drawn the unit impulse signal here, and I'll just sketch it on top of, right, so that's 0. I'll sketch uh, delta of t on top of p of t. Well, we see that when we multiply these together, we're going to get nothing for t less than 0 and nothing for t greater than 0, right? All we can get is an impulse, right? But now the impulse is going to be scaled by whatever p of t is equal to at 0. So what we're going to get back is p of 0 delta of t. So we get back an impulse at 0 with an area of p of 0, okay? So that's what we get back when we multiply p of t by delta of t. So what happens if we multiply uh, by a shifted impulse? So we multiply p of t by an impulse now that's at t0. 
If we do that, let me just sketch, right? So T0 is somewhere here, right? Uh, let me sketch that a little better. T0 is here, right? It's still a unit impulse um, that we're multiplying by. Uh, but now what we're going to get, right? We're, and when we do this multiplication, we get zero everywhere here and zero everywhere here. But now we pick up the value uh, of P of T at time T zero. So what we'll get back out is we'll get P of T zero is the area of the impulse. And that impulse will be at T zero. So we have an impulse at T zero with an area that's equal to the height of the signal P of T at T0. So that's what we get when we multiply a continuous time signal with an impulse. So in continuous signals and systems, we're actually going to use the, um, the impulse function, the unit impulse function, in our derivation of the convolution integral, which is a key component. So in signals and systems, we're going to use the unit impulse function as a way to represent continuous time signals. And to see how we could do that, we can think about representing an arbitrary signal x of t, here this black line, um, as a sum of sh scaled and shifted rectangular pulses. So here's the little rectangular pulse um, that I showed you previously, right? It, it starts at zero and it has um, a width of delta and a height of one over delta. Well, I could um, stack up a whole bunch of these shifted uh, rectangular pulses. So one's at zero, one's at delta, one's at two delta, and so on, right? And I could scale each of them by the value of the signal at that point. And then I could sort of crudely approximate uh, this uh, sig underlying continuous signal x of t as all these shale, scaled and shifted deltas, a scaled and shifted rectangular pulses. So here's the scaling. It's the height of the signal x of t at whatever point it is. Here's the little delta pulse. And I have to have an additional scaling by delta to correct uh, for this, right, so that the height is, is correct. All right, so I could approximate my uh, signal x of t as a bunch of these scaled and shifted rectangular pulses. So now I'm going to imagine taking, again, the limit as delta goes to zero. So if I take the limit as delta goes to zero of this summation, the summation actually turns into an integral. And all those little um, rectangular pulses go to delta of t. So this summation as delta goes to zero turns into this integral, right? So the integral I have is x of t is equal to the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of x of tau, that's basically this term, delta of t minus tau, that's a shifted continuous impulse, uh, times d tau, which is, um, takes the place of the big delta here. And this is known as the sifting property of the, um, of the continuous time impulse. And we're going to use this in deriving the convolution integral. So this has been a brief introduction to the continuous time impulse signal. For more information, you can refer to section 1.4 of Signals and Systems Second Edition by Oppenheim and Wilski with Nawab. And there are plenty of classic references on generalized functions in the mathematics literature. For instance, you can see the textbook by Lighthill from 1958, and that's referenced in a footnote on page 36 of the textbook. So there's plenty of other information out there. This video simply summarizes a few key points about the continuous time impulse. Thanks for watching.